Justin Carney here. Boom. Uh, so this would be, I guess, the second day of my vlog. Uh, just seeing how this goes. Anyway, uh, I just had a great practice session. Um, I was working on my right hand. Um, I saw a video recently by the drum channel called Be The Drum, and they had a video about... Um, it was Antonio Sanchez playing on the drum set. He was talking about how he hits his ride cymbal a specific way to get the sound of the cymbal to ring out. And I realized that I'm basically, I'm playing a drum when I hit my string, you know? Kind of similar. It's the same action where I hit it. And so I was thinking, okay, I want to work on getting a really clean sound every time I strike with this hand. But anyway, the point is, I've decided that I'm going to be playing, trying to play not from the pads of my fingers, but maybe from the side a little bit. Because I think it adds a little bit of a punch to the sound, so that's what I'm going to be practicing. It's a lot more awkward. seen some bass players who I think have really great intonation. I've noticed that they have their elbows down and their wrist like this. And I started to play like that. So giant steps today uh, because in one of my other episodes or my last vlog I was saying you know I want to work on scales but in the context of songs so that way I can really keep learning and so giant steps is one of those tunes where it's like if you don't kind of if you don't stay on it then in my case I lose it so um, I heard some great musicians play it the other day and so I really wanted to get it under my fingers I played along with the record um, and I was able to, you know, keep up with the group, playing with both hands. I wasn't, I didn't have really good speakers, so I had to play kind of soft. Um, and I was focusing on just hitting, um, leading through the chords, but with roots and fifths. Um, and, uh, so I did that a few times, and then I started to use some of the more chromatic things happening. Um, then, uh, what I did was, I played my B major scale, all of the intervals in all of the modes. Um, so, so I'm playing C sharp. Dorian, I would do two octaves and then I did thirds. And then, I'm not standing right. And then, I did, um, fourths. And my other thing that I did was fifths, sixths, and sevenths. And B is a hard key for me, so that's why I was really focusing on B. Then I just did a little bit of time in G where I was going nice and slow, focusing on this hand, and I did the same for E flat. And then, so then what I decided to do was really think about the form because. I remember when I was younger, I used to have a very easy time navigating through those changes, but because I stopped playing it when I was younger, I, I stopped playing the upright bass for about three or four years, and a lot of the stuff that I had worked on, this is a long time ago, a lot of the stuff that I had worked on I forgot about. Uh, and this was one of those in particular f songs. Uh, and so I remember I used to feel comfortable just switching the keys. Um, and But now what I wanted to do is go through and think about all of the connections that I can make for this song. Um, and so I made a few. Um, if you notice, the, when they're playing the melody, or the first half of the song, it starts in B. So, 
so um, so we go to the B major seven, D seven, G major, B flat seven. If you were to kind of add two chords in there, because it's kind of just like one and then a new five and then a new one, but if you add the two, then you can think of it like down a whole step from the chord you were starting on. And then two. And I was like, okay, that's pretty cool. That's a good way for me to visualize. Um, what's happening, um, and then uh, when they get to the E flat, it's a two five um, going to the key of G, but it's a a tritone away, and then the same thing. So from G, F minor, B flat, and then uh, excuse me, E flat, and then D flat. It's actually a C sharp to an F sharp, but. It's sometimes easy to forget that a C sharp minor and an E flat major are just a whole step from each other. Now I'm back in B. Now the minor chords are going to move in um, uh, tritones again, like a F minor to the G. So we went from after the B chord, we do a 2-5 to the E flat. Then a 2-5 to the G. 2-5 to B. certain times the chords, um, the, the roots move only just like a whole, you can think of it as like just moving a whole step and then other times the chords go the tritone. And uh, so that kind of, thinking about that sort of connection helps it get into my head. Another thing I like to do is think about when I'm playing in this, in the, through the song, think about landing certain notes of the chords right on the ones because I feel like when you get to beat one that's kind of in my mind the end of a phrase instead of the beginning of the phrase um one two Two in the morning. I've been practicing for a while now. It's two twenty-four a.m. I've been practicing for a while, um, but you know this is what it's all about. So I'm going to probably put giant steps down for a little bit tonight. Um, and what I want to work on now, uh, there's a bass player. Sorry, I'm going to move the camera. There's a bass player named Chris Fitzgerald. He's I he I mentioned him earlier. He was the one that did the Bach Relige video. Anyway, I got out my old Bach book. Um, and you'll probably notice it's actually in pretty good condition. I've had it for a long time, but I was so intimidated by playing this up the octave, you know, arco, that I was like, all right, I'm going to save this for when I'm in my 50s. But, uh, so he's doing it in, you know, down here, um, and he's also doing it pizzicato. So I wanted to, you know, go ahead and do that um, and really focus on the articulation and the sound that I'm getting. Um, and he recommends doing this because he says that the two, you know, the Bach and the um, bebop go hand in hand together. So that's what I'm going to work on tonight. It's just some bebop, I mean, excuse me, just some Bach. And I already did the uh, giant steps and I worked on my time and I went through the scales and I did a lot of that stuff too. Anyway, thank you guys. I'm keeping this short because I only have 10 minutes apparently. Love you guys. I'll see you guys in the next one.